if i dig deeper about the neuroscience of dyslexia it would be uh, it would create more quality in the work that i do so the first one i have split them presentation into three major parts first one would be introduction to dyslexia and the second one would be uh, cognitive neuroscience of typical reading and the third one would be we will discuss the neuroscience of dyslexia so dyslexia the word it is from the greek uh, roots and dys means uh, impaired and lexia means speech sound word so problem with speech sound and words we call it as dys dyslexia it is basically uh, said as phonological processing issue all the all they they have is that they do have a reading disability reading difficulty and if you can see this uh, picture here and if you can see you know i have learned that there you can see there you no know, t h e r e are the exact right one but here there is some phonological uh, processing issue that they have mistaken e with a so this is something that they usually have and you can see the letters here you know it's little bit uh, mm, there are lot of word reversal there are lot of uh, spelling errors which are due to the phonological processing basically sound processing and other issues they do have is that because of the sound processing they cannot do the fluent reading so because of all these uh, you know drawbacks that the children have they do face a lot of higher academic anxiety when we compare to the typical readers and if we have to uh, diagnose this uh, disability it can be done at the third grade at the age of 7 to 8 and it is highly heritable uh, heritable dis ability and it runs in family and there is no link between iq even high iq and low iq children would have, will have dyslexia and if you can see the this picture this blurred one this is how they see this is how they read uh, this is how you know they comprehend things which makes them very which makes it very difficult for them to understand and if you can see the phonological awareness this is where the exact issue is there they cannot you know rhyme if for example pin if we if we tell them to change p with f it is difficult for them blending is difficult segmenting joining together is difficult and manipulating p for b b for t is all difficult for them so we will also dig down uh, deeper about the typical reading how brain works and then we will go about the you know cognitive neuroscience of dyslexia so that we can have greater insights about these things so if you can see that you know reading activity in the brain actually has uh, three major uh, regions so first one is that inferior frontal gyrus and second one is that peritotemporal and third one is that occipitotemporal inferior frontal gyrus has this um, a speech motor production this is where they you know Uh, pronounce they tell the word and word analysis this part is mainly important for the language and here is what you know we visually recognize the words which i'll be talking uh, more deeper in the further slides reading is actually a very complex behavior and it also needs you know coordination of language vision attention and thought and when uh, a reading is matured we call it matured when all these regions are activated and all, all these regions work in a sync all these regions work in concert then we could tell that you know uh, that the reader is able to read fluently and occipitotemporal cortex if i have to talk about it it is a visual word formation area which means that if for example k at cat if we have to phonologically process when we grow up you know we when we try to recollect cat immediately the visual uh, image comes to our brain that you know cat cat it comes immediately so reading this printed letters for kids you know it takes a long time it, needs a bit of schooling and damage to this region, region this occipitotemporal region you know may cause a a cured as alexia which means you know they cannot uh, read the complete reading ability is totally gone and you know high frequency words depends on visual word formation area which means that when we see the words continuously the visual formation uh, area you know catch up that printed letters and it flashes immediately which reduces the phonological processing and there is other region that is responsible for reading which is called as tempo temporoparietal um parietal uh, cortex which is responsible for hearing and speaking whatever we see in the printed letters what we have to do is that we have to speak just now just like how i see the visual print and i you know immediately tell i immediately do that processing and talk to you so that processing requires you know cross modulation translation where we convert the visual print into spoken letters if for example uh, the sound c could you know immediately uh, map deeper down when we see the print c so increased activation of this area is strongly linked with the 
better reading and phonological cells, uh, phonological skills, which means that we have to immediately quickly convert the sound into letter and and decoding and low frequency, low frequency, high frequency. We have seen that, you know, occipital temporal cortex works on it. Decoding new uh, vocabularies, low frequency words depends upon this uh, left tempo, left temporal parietal cortex, because all we do is decoding. All we do is to st start reading the word from the scratch. And inferior frontal cortex is another one beautiful thing that we uh, use. Uh, for speech motor production and we also use um, uh, silent reading to read the words because when we were kids you know we you know uh, we slowly start you know at, at like that we used to read in our mind and then we used to tell it loudly you know so that's what that was that that is what is happening with kids when they um, you know are there in the developmental stage so when we grow older we start to relay less on frontal cortex because we start to relay more on the temporal uh, uh, temporal parietal cortex because sorry occipital parietal cortex because we focus more on we get you know a pattern to visual word from uh, word formation area and this increased activation is linked with phonological task difficulty because after a certain stage we have to uh, you know change that pattern you know the visual formation area should also get activated but here if this gets activated you know then it means there is a lot of effort and the phonological task difficulty arises then so this is the brain structure and uh, typical for typical reading the picture that you see is the broca's area and wernicke's area broca's area is uh, strongly linked with speech motor production wernicke's area is uh, one key areas is linked with uh, language comprehension. How we understand this? Understand this. This arcuate fasciculus is a subset of a longitudinal fasciculus, superior longitudinal fasciculus, which helps you know for this all these connections. One greater uh, surprising thing that we have you know for typical readers is that there is a greater gray matter and white matter. Uh, uh, a volume is actually increased when we you know consciously study and this connectivity also increases with age and there is another two fasciculus which are uh, involved in reading is that inferior longitudinal fasciculus which connects temporal and occipital which is used for visual processing and superior longitudinal uh, fasciculus you know is involved between uh, frontal lobe and parietal lobe where we use phonemic representation to motor representation phonemic re representation is uh, the ability to recognize the sound of a single letter and we convert it into speaking. So this is the cognitive neuroscience of uh, dyslexia. So what really happens is that before we have seen that there is an increased activation in the temporo temporoparietal region and occipito temporal region. But here there is a decreased functional activation which is seen in the fMRI and structural MRI also. There is also structural difference and there is reduced gray matter. Strength of white matter is also uh, reduced for children with dyslexia, uh, which can be clearly seen, you know, when a 10 year old dyslexia will be at least three years behind in reading ability when we compare it with typical um, uh, readers and they often struggle with fluent reading and phonological awareness which i've already told you brain function in dyslexia this is uh, one important thing that we have to focus when we talk about dyslexia is that you know we could see the clear difference in structure and function the clear difference in structure and function and there is reduced activation in the area which i've told you and occipital temporal cortex if we focus on there is an under activation when we compare with typical reading there is a uh, over activation but here there is an under activation that is why they depend more on the inferior frontal cortex and uh, and they, the, because of this you know they have very much difficulty in identifying a word a task uh, cons consisting of word identification and rapid naming and all these things you know occipital temporal visual word form images should come quickly right for them it is a little bit difficult and they cannot uh, do that all they have to do is to struggle uh, uh, is to you know bit uh, do the phonological decoding which depends upon the temporoparietal cortex so if you see this regions uh, there is an underactivation here also 
uh, for a typical readers, there is an increased activation with increase of effort. But for dyslexic children, even with increased effort, there is not uh, the, that much noticeable difference. This picture is a clear picture which talks about the difference between them. The Broca's area, which you can see, you know, it is a little bit activated. And you can see the blue one for word analysis and occipital visual word form is also activated. But for dyslexic uh, children, you cannot see any activation here. This is where they struggle with visual word form area is affected and word analysis affected only the articulation uh, speaking uh, um, word and uh, speaking articulation of word is is done to a certain extent and this uh, increase in frontal cortex can be linked with the um, compensatory process as i already told you it is a little bit difficult for them to do the um, pic pictorial uh, representation so all they do is you know they rely on the frontal um, cortex so if you could see this one is a uh, diffusion tensor imaging which uh, actually takes the white matter white matter tracks which uh, focuses on um, uh, axons uh, this uh, go golden one which you see is for the typical readers and the blue one which you see is for the dyslexic readers. If you could see, you know, typical readers would use left side of the brain a lot, but uh, dyslexic readers depend more on the right side of, of the brain as well. And there is a reduced strength of white matter, gray matter, and which is a major reason for phonological impairments. And uh, since they use white uh, matter tracks, this can be used as a alternative reading network and one interesting thing you know which supports the right brain and left brain coordination and exchange of language based instruction is due to the strong corpus callosum connection between them they do have a very stronger corpus callosum than when compared to the uh, typical readers and when we see about the primary visual system magnocellular pathway if we focus that development is actually impaired that is why you know they see that blur division which i've showed you in the uh, starting one that is why they are not able to you know uh, they see the words like uh, uh, it, it would be you know a lot of word reversing and all these things and there is also a uh, impairments in uh, auditory system as well and reduced activation in cerebellum cerebellum is one thing that we have uh, you know, not taken into consideration for reading, but cerebellum has also, rather than focusing on balancing motor coordination, it also has an excellent role in playing non-motor language. It works on language basically, and there is a region in cerebellum which does that. So when we compare typical readers with dyslexic readers, to sum up, this is what happens. Here it is increased activation of visual word form area. Here there is a decreased act activation and there is a uh, temporoparietal phonological skills and cross modulation in, in uh, integration cross modulation integration in a sense when we see the visual input we convert it into sound no that is actually increased here that is not increased that is what is the issue here and decreased activation of inferior frontal cortex here there is inferior activation and in, in uh, increased activation in inferior frontal cortex which we saw in that image uh, when we compared dyslexic readers with typical readers where we saw that increased uh, uh, a red uh, color activation there and increased white matter gray matter which obviously helps in stronger connections here there is reduced white matter strength which affects the reading ability and uh, dyslexic also depends upon the right uh, white matter pathways to carry the information between the left and right brain and in order to process um, in order to use their potential and all these regions and tracks works and things but the major um you know the disappointing thing is that here there is no sync between uh the region and there are there is a lot of errors in reading no errors in visual and auditory system here magnocellular pathway magnocellular uh, pathway which is there in the uh, lateral geniculate uh thing is actually the development is actually affected which leads to the blur reading and this rapid immediate processing of information like when we see four to five instructions it is very difficult for them left brain is used for reading and both left and right brain is used for reading and other thing which i could uh, point out with that you know dyslexic children are most likely to have adhd they do both come come together so the references that i've used is this paper and all the images were taken from google